Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Jenny Douglas. I'm the Dean of Graduate Studies and Research, and I'm very happy to be hosting as part of our 2022 Research for the Public Good event. Um, this is our internal research conference at the university where we're highlighting the research that we do and talking about resources for research at APUS. And this session is focusing on our journals um, at APUS. We have several peer-reviewed journals at the university and we've invited the editors of those journals to come and speak about them a bit to um, explain the topic and scope of their journals and to talk a bit about what they're looking for as editors for submission types for those publications and to give everyone uh, a chance to learn more about how you could submit mm -hmm. to one of these publications if you're interested in doing that or spread the word because I know our editors are actively looking for more submissions. So I see, I see a lot of our editors here in the room here and Kathleen several times. <laughs> so uh, Kelsey, if it's okay with you, I'll just kick off and have our editors um, introduce themselves and which journal they represent. So let's just do that first, a quick introduction and which journal you represent. And um, I will try to get everybody here, but you might have to just speak up if I don't call you right away. So let's start with um, Ron and Marsha. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. This is Ron Johnson. I'm a professor in the School of Business and also the co-editor, along with Marsha Sotella for the International Journal of Open Educational Resources. And we'll talk about that journal later. But we've been doing this job now for about four or five months. And we uh it's, it's challenging but we are really enjoying our time doing this so marcia would you like to say a few words sure so i'm marcia sotalo i'm the department chair of nursing i'm the co-editor along with ron and as he said we've um, only been doing this for a few months and are working toward printing or publishing our first edition as the co-editors excellent um let's have Kristen and Gary, um, hop on and introduce yourselves. Sure. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Kristen Miller. I am a faculty member of the, um, the Department of Space Studies, which is part of the School of STEM. Uh, and uh, along with Gary Deal, I am one of the co-editors in chief for the CESA journal. CESA stands for Space Education and Strategic Applications. Um, and we are excited to be editing the journal. We just uh, published our first issue in uh, summer of 2022, and we're looking forward to uh, doing our next issue, uh, sort of a January winter issue in, uh, in 2023. Um, so I'll let, I'll let Gary introduce himself. Thanks so much, Kristen. Hi, everybody. Uh, Dr. Gary Deal. Um, I am a professor in the School of Business with a focus on HR management and employment, um, but also a graduate of the APUS um, Space Studies programs at the ASBS and MS levels. So uh, happy to be a participant in the CISA Journal as a co-editor in chief alongside Kristen and uh, really happy to be here with everyone today. Thank you for having me. Sorry for any background noise. I'm just uh, on the way home from a commute. So. <laughs> but pleasure to be here. Thank you. <clears throat> sure. Thank you very much, Gary. And let's go to Kathleen. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. You sound good. Okay. Sorry. Oh, was that me or did she just freeze? I can still hear you. Okay, Jenny. Kathleen, I think we lost you there in the sound. Okay. We'll come. We'll try to come back. Um, Jeff, could we go to you? Yeah, hi, uh, my name is Jeff Ballard. I'm the editor-in-chief of the Sabering School for the uh, student alumni run uh, history journal of the American Public University System. Uh, Sabering School, we're just starting our 11th year of publication and we hope next year to spin off a uh, military history only journal entitled the Military History Chronicle. So it's very nice to meet all of you. I look forward to the next hour. 
Thank you so much. And I don't see our editors here for global security and strategic intel. Do you, Kelsey? I'm not seeing them right now. So I'll chime in for them for the moment. And then if one of them is able to join, we'll I'll at least pull up their site later on. We have an additional peer reviewed journal on the Journal of Global Security and Strategic Intelligence that focuses broadly on international relations, security, and intelligence issues. And um, that has been going for several years. And I think our current editors are in the same boat as uh, several of the folks here and joined as co-editors earlier in this year. And I should say, as we kick off that with all of these journals, we have APUS has been partnering with an, ex, uh, an organization called the Policy Studies Organization. And through that partnership, the electronic versions of the journals are produced as well as some print versions. And I'll let our editors talk about that partnership a bit more, but that's sort of the venue through which um, the journals are able to be published and some of the editorial processes and the behind the scenes work gets done in terms of having those publications come out. And I see Kathleen here. Kathleen, you wanna try again? Maybe. <laughs> We'll keep trying. <laughs> uh, so I think what would be useful for folks is to hear a little bit more about, you've said the title of your journal, right? But the, a little more in depth about the topics of the various journals and uh, in particular for people who are thinking about their publication opportunities here, what sort of scope or topics you might be looking for as editors of those journals. So I know, I think Ron, you had a slide. Kelsey, do we want to start with that? Sure, Ron, would you like me to share or would you like to share? You can share. So we'll get that going to talk first about the International Journal of Open Educational Resources, which is fairly uh, groundbreaking in that field since it's a relatively new and emerging area. And I know APUS has been excited to kind of get us into that area with a peer reviewed journal. So I'll let um, Ron and Marsha take it away from here to talk about IJOER and then we'll just continue the discussion with our other editors. So everyone, uh... Take a good look at that name because, no, I won't get into it, but it's I-J-O-E-R, uh, International Journal of Open Educational Resources, and we're, we are honored to be here today. And my, uh, our co-editor, Marsha, is going to do the next couple of slides, and then I'll close it out. So, Marsha, please. Next slide. Okay. Uh, who we are. We are a journal. Oh, I'm sorry. It would help if I came off mute. I'm so sorry, Ron. Okay, okay. so <laughs> who we are. Uh, we're an international journal, so we're looking for research, not just within the United States, but internationally, on the use of educational, open educational resources. So this includes quantitative and qualitative research. It can be the impact on students. It can be quantitative research to show the outcomes. Where we are right now, um, is we're trying to get more submissions. So we have had some very good articles submitted that are in the peer review process, but we need a few more before we'll be ready to publish our first regular um, biannual edition. So where we are going is still just trying to get more um, articles. Uh, we've been trying to get the word out through different means on the PSO website, um, through reaching out to the editorial board, and we're starting to get, like I said, we've had five submissions so far, four of them that we've gone ahead and sent to the peer reviewers. And I'd just like to add on that slide is that we have, uh, we had a meeting yesterday with the uh, mm -hmm. academic leadership team. So we, we have a better idea of where we are going. And we also have a good relationship. And I think that's an upcoming slide when we talk about the PSO. So go ahead, Marcia, you can. 
So Ron and I are meeting on a biweekly basis. Um, sometimes it seems even more than that. Just trying to um, work through how to increase submissions and working those articles through the peer review process. And the PSO has been a fantastic organization to work with. They really help in so many ways, including the um, Scholastica website that we use to manage the submission process. They will um, do all the editing for us, uh, format everything, and then publish both digitally and physical copies as well if we would like them. Next slide. So I think we've made it clear. That's our issue right now. We need more submissions, more, more, more submissions. So there has not been um, an edition of the journal published in a while. And so um, that is basically all Ron and I are doing right now is trying to increase submissions. So um, for that, not only do we want submissions from faculty at APUS, but if you know others outside APUS that are using OER, um, that would be fantastic to work toward um, just getting the word out and trying to increase interest and increase those submissions. So Ron, let's say someone that? here went to a conference and they saw a presentation that they thought, oh, this might be a good article. How, what would be the best way for them to refer people to you or the journal? Okay, so I've actually done that myself. So what I would ask is, please talk to them, let them know we have a journal and then try to get their card and their contact information, send it to Ron and I, and we will reach out to them. And I have done that. I, I've been to a couple of OER presentations at nursing conferences and then reached out to the speakers afterwards just to let them know we would love to publish um, their research. All right, next slide. I will let Ron cover this because this was um, Ron's doing and it. We are, uh, we, Mar Marcia and I subscribe to a lot of different um, sites that are specific to OER. And that's one way we're trying to get the word out is through them. And a couple of months ago, I noticed on one of the newsletters that we received was a competition and it was the Global OER uh, Consortium. So they were recognizing individuals, universities, groups who were using OER in innovative uh, ways. So I thought, hey, we were one of the first universities to go total OER, and why not share that? So we talked to Jenny, we talked to Vernon, Marie, and they all agreed that that would be a good, good thing to do. So we put together a nomination package and we were selected as a finalist. We didn't win, but we were in the top three and uh, we were pleased about that. So I reached out to the person who was putting together this awards program and told her that we would love to publish a special edition from the winners of the different categories of uh, the awards. And it was an international, like in our category, it was a European consortium of OER schools that were using uh, these types of materials. So I need to follow up. I sent that out, I think, on Monday, and that was yesterday, and or day before. We're still waiting to hear back from them, but uh, that would be really, really good. And we'll be talking to PSO Daniel Gateos tomorrow about this issue, among others. And that's it for that slide. All right. All right. Thank you so much. That's that's very helpful. Um, I think I'm going to go to Kristen and Dar and Gary next. And if, Kristen, if you want to share anything, I think you have the sharing powers if you want to show your site. But really, we're just interested in what is CISA and what kind of uh, article submissions would you be looking for from from you and Gary? Sure. Um... Yeah, and I can, um, I, I don't have an actual slide, but I can share the uh, the journal website so you guys can all see it. Um, just to tell you a little bit more about the journal, um, we are an, an open access journal. We're peer reviewed 
and um, we're published biannually, so summer and winter every year. And we're looking for a wide variety of things. We publish um, a lot of, you know, research articles, full-length articles, but also um, editorials, commentaries, book reviews, um, conference papers. We have published are in the works of publishing um, some master's theses from different students. Um, you know, they need to be edited down to a reasonable size. We're not going to publish an 85 plus page paper, but, um, but you know, if, if the students want to edit it down, um, you know, for their capstone thesis, um, that's a great option and, and a really uh, important way to recognize the work that our students are doing. So we welcome those publications as well. Um, we have a, uh, so space education and strategic applications, that there really should be a comma, it should be space comma, space education comma, and space strategic applications there. Basically anything space we're gonna publish. Um, so we look at you know space research, we look at um, space education, we look at uh, you know defense uh, satellites, um, uh, space medicine, simulation, space policy, economics, any anything you put space in front of that, that's any, that would be appropriate for the journal. So um, space is the key word. Um, but we have a, our articles have a really wide range in topic, um, which is great. And uh, we, um, you know, we're, we're publishing, um, I just trying to kind of um, mimic the feel for the discipline right now, which is pretty broad as we have, you know, commercial government and uh, military players in the space field. So really anything on any of those um, topics would be appropriate. And we do um, partner with the policy space, um, policy studies organization, sorry, policy studies organization. Uh, they've been fantastic with the journal and they help us also run the CISA conference every year. Um, so we like to publish a lot of the uh, papers that come out of that or come out of the talks from that as well. Um, I don't know, I don't know, Gary, if you want to add anything, if I've missed anything, it's kind of broad. Um, yeah, no, I think you covered it very well, Chris. And I guess the only thing that I would add is, um, that uh, in addition to all the topics you listed, all of the private sector space activities are certainly keen to help promote research in those areas as well. Um, we've uh, presented in different fashions on uh, the private sector sort of growth of launch companies and logistics operations. Obviously, SpaceX is kind of the big uh, player in that field right now, but there are many other smaller companies that are developing different applications for in space, in orbit use, as well as launch vehicles. And uh, so we've been looking at research for that and, and happy to promote it with the journal as well. Um, a uh, space entrepreneurship track was actually developed between the School of Business and the School of STEM, uh, I want to say about two years ago. We were able to build a specialty track. It's a, it's a subset concentration under the bachelor's and master's programs for space studies. So you can actually focus in space entrepreneurship. And I think that's a big piece of, of what we're hoping to be able to promote through our, our research publications. But other than that, I think you did a great job, Kristen. I don't have anything else to add. Thank you so much. I'll come back around to, do we have Kathleen now? I think she just dropped out. Oh, she just dropped. Yeah. It's, it's the day of bad Zoom for Kathleen. Um, <laughs> Jeff, would you like to tell us more about Saber and Scroll, which holds sort of a unique place as a student and alumni based publication, which is very cool. Yeah, I, um, I don't have a PowerPoint. I do have, uh, I can show you the, the, the website, the Scholastica website itself. But yeah, we're, uh, this is our, we're beginning our 11th year of publication. We, um, publish well during the pandemic we we were only able to publish two to three times a year but i think we're back up to pre-pandemic levels it's sort of an embarrassment of which is a lot of pent-up demand i think uh, a lot of people spent time at home writing which is which is precisely what i do uh, and so we we were publishing for, we're going to be publishing four times a year four times this year and we really we accept uh Articles, book reviews, 
uh, museum reviews. Uh, we've published lecture reviews and other sorts of ex exhibition reviews on any topic of any, uh, from any genre of, of any topic of, of history. It, it needs to be historical in nature. Uh, we, because we're associated with the American Military University, we have uh, quite a few uh, articles devoted to military history. And we're, that is probably our largest single area of uh, submissions. We're, we're getting to the point now where uh, we're working with PSO to spin off a uh, second journal, which is devoted to military history. I cannot say enough great things about Daniel Gutierrez and, and our association with BSO. It's made all the difference in the world to us. For the longest time, you know, we've been very well known among the under the AP US umbrella, but it hasn't been until recently where uh, we're starting to get, see more and more submissions from other academic institutions, from independent historians, and from people in, in, uh, who are outside or out from under the APUS umbrella, and that's from other academic institutions and outside the US. So that's, that's we're so really excited about that. We've also, for the last couple of years, uh, partnered with an organization here in Southern California called the, the Historical Miniature Gaming Society, Pacific Southwest um, Division. And we worked with P, uh, uh, HMGS to sponsor a historical uh, military history contest, essay writing contest. And we have two divisions. We have the, the division, which we call the Rising Historians, which are elementary, middle, and high school students. Uh, they are all, all, all submissions are winners. And because of some uh, generous gifts from our corporate sponsors, everybody receives a certificate and, uh, and a gift card to Target. Now, the upper division historians, which are primarily uh, graduate students, um, they, we, their essays are judged and uh, the winners are published in the Sabre and Scroll. And they also receive a, a cash scholarship donated by the Historical Miniature Gaming Society. So if, if I could, do I have, um, can, I, can I share my screen? Yes, you should have permissions to do that. Okay, here we go. Yep. So, um, again, this, you know, um, you know, for the longest time, uh, the journal was was hosted um, in in um, Digital Commons, and we had a lot of success there. However, I have to say that uh, you know, since with our partnership with uh, PSO, really the, the number of visitors uh, to our site, the number of downloads and such has really taken off. And we're, and we're really excited about that. Uh, I think the, the website, the, the, the website templates that we can have access to through Scholastica is just phenomenal. And I love the, um, you know, I love the, the, uh, the public domain or royalty free art that's available to us through that. So I think it makes just for a really spectacular looking journal. Um, I also, we during the pandemic, we really embraced the concept of this rolling publication. So for years and years and years, we waited to publish until we could, you know, uh, get together a critical mass of articles uh, to publish. So, but what we've, what we started doing during the the pandemic was to go to this rolling publication model, which I learned about through the Scholastica blog. And that's essentially publishing articles when they are ready. Uh, and then when, when you have a, a critical mass of articles, then you can put together a, um, a print publication or you can, you know, you can bind them to, into a single book or journal. Um, I think that keeps the, the readers much more engaged. They don't have to wait 
Uh, what it does mostly is it excites the authors because nobody wants to submit something and then have to wait nine months for publication. I'm sure we've all experienced that. Um, and so, you know, it really increases engagement amongst the readers. It gets the, uh, the authors excited. Um, you know, PSO makes the hard copies of the journal available through Amazon.com. Um, the, 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 the purchases there, you know, they're, they're nominal. It's primarily it's the authors buying a copy for their mama. Uh, but the other thing that, that, uh, that PSO is fantastic about is they will um, give me as many copies of the journal as I want in order to, as a giveaway. And so, for example, at GradFest every year, that's one of the things that we give away at the Saber and Scroll on a journal table during GradFest. Um, I think the only other things that I wanted to mention is we're starting next year, we're going to spin off a military history only journal. Uh, it's called, the working title is the, the Military History Chronicles. Uh, we also have an associate editor named Joseph Campbell, who's really excited about, he loves blogging. In fact, these are a couple of his blogs here on the screen. And he's also working with our marketing director, uh, Peggy Kurkowski, to put together a, uh, uh, a podcast for the Sabre and School. So got a lot of people and, and that's really what it, what it all comes down to. And I'm sure you all experience the same thing in that this is a group this is a group effort and, and the results are only as good as the people that we have contributing uh, to the effort. And so for that, I'm really, really thankful. I'm really thankful for, for Daniel Gutierrez and Paul Rich at PSO. And um, I also wanted to shout out to a, a gal named Judy Mulholland, who has recently become our art director. And she's the one that, uh, that really is instrumental and helping me put together this website. So as far as submissions are concerned, um, we, uh, we publish through, through the PSO, through the Scholastica site and through uh, HNET, we publish four calls for papers every year, uh, summer, spring, winter, and uh, summer, spring, winter, and fall. And uh, we also lean heavily on the graphic arts people PSO to help us put together some really, really nice looking slicks for uh, uh, calls for papers that we can hand out at various conferences and stuff. So uh, if you know of anybody, if you're interested in, in publishing on any topic related to history, what I recommend is you go here to our website, uh, Saber and School, uh, Scholastica, C A H Q. And uh, if you go to for the authors, here is all of our submission guidelines. And at the very bottom here, uh, you have an email address where you can submit the papers. So that's all I got. Thanks for, thanks for your time. Thank you so much. That's very exciting with the four issues per year. And I like the rolling publication model as a way to get get work out the door quicker. Absolutely. I think we have Kathleen trying really hard here. Kathleen, are you on the phone? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, you sound good. Okay, I'm sorry. I've been trying for over 30 minutes to get in and I just keep getting Zoom screens that spin and they're shadowed out. And then it just logs me in like 10 times. <laughs> so I, Okay, here I am. So I think Kelsey has the PowerPoint up for the Journal of Online Learning Research and Practice. Yes, are your slides are ready to go when you are. Okay, if you want to go to the next slide after the title slide. Um, our, our journal has been around for some time. I'll mention that in, in the upcoming slide, but in 2019, towards the end, I renamed it from Internet Learning Journal to Journal of Online Learning Research and Practice. And then in 2021, I don't know what all the editors have mentioned because I've been off, on, off on the phone this whole half hour. But, um, but we use Scholastica now, and so we have a new website there. And PSO, Policy Studies Organization, does do most of the management of it. Um, but we're 
we have access to images of articles and things. So over time, what I'm doing with my journal is trying to update the images that PSO just kind of loaded with articles. And we're trying to get images that match the articles and not just be abstract or whatever. Um, next slide. So a bit of an overview. It's, of course, a peer-reviewed journal. Policy Studies Organization and American Public University publish this journal um, is established by former APUS provost, executive vice president, Dr. Frank McCluskey. The first issue was published in 2012. It is published by in annually, and it's published in both print and online versions. And here you can see the old cover and the new cover. I could go to the next slide about the journal. Um, the mission statement of the Journal of Online Learning Research and Practice, or we call it JOLRAP for short, seeks to explore a variety of emerging topics and questions related to teaching, learning, and online hybrid contexts, which is teaching virtually and in person across uh, fields and disciplines. So the focus is really on adult learners. It could be in the area of security global studies, um, science, education, teacher education, you name it, uh, corporate training, as long as it has to do with some kind of teaching of really adult learners and, and there's some online or technology component involved. And that also includes some of the, the background things. So it's institutional, programmatic, and course level. Um, it can be dis discipline specific, interdisciplinary, student focused, faculty focused, technology focused. Um, you know, sometimes we want um, articles about the learning management systems, uh, OERs, you know, things going on behind the scenes. On the next slide, the journal structure. We do accept research studies of all types. We have a voices from the field section. Those are usually theoretical papers, best practices, or evidence-based practices. We have a feature. This is by invitation only, three questions for an online learning leader. Um, but anyone can recommend somebody. Uh, we have an emerging scholar section, but that hasn't really launched yet. And I've been editor-in-chief for um, six years <laughs> and we've tried to work with some grad students and some early career folks but we just haven't gotten anything really going in that section but we're, we keep trying um, we do offer a lot of support as editor-in-chief i go beyond the scope of my role and i will help a lot with uh, editing and revising um, not that i'll do the revision work but i mean i will help get the article up to par to be published if it has solid content good ideas but it, there's just some writing issues we do have book reviews and media reviews. We prefer the book reviews cover books published within the last couple of years. And it's great if they are free eBooks, of course, and it has to be germane to the journal and its scope. We take media reviews. So that could be reviews of apps or other digital tools. The examples are learning management systems, digital portfolios, iRubrics, all of those kinds of things. And I put a little blurb up here that we really are seeking submissions, uh, we don't get many of these, if any, related to online learner identity, learner faculty intellectual property, LMS security, um, university record system security, social media use with classes and safety considerations of that when students and faculty are using social media, ethical issues related to online classroom and institutional analytics and privacy. Uh, if you go to the next slide. Uh, this is just a sampling of some of the journal topics, but things to think about in any type of course, any discipline, growth of online learning, online teaching, learning strategies, especially if they're discipline specific, you know, with science, you have lab equipment and things that need to be shipped, those kinds of things. Online versus face-to-face -face learning and the overlap of those in hybrid settings, retention, um, integration of collaborative learning, whether it's in person, hybrid, online. Uh, and you could see the list there, so I'm not going to read through. And if you want to go to the next slide, um, I want to mention that every article does have a home, but it's all about finding a good fit. And I have written a little online article about this, but just for some tips for those who maybe aren't as well published, I would recommend first, um, searching journals and trying to find that topic alignment, especially if there are upcoming themes, but you can skim the articles and see what kind of things they publish and then identify those gaps that you see missing 
Um, but be flexible and adjust. Maybe you have a topic that's close or on the periphery and you can just tweak it to fit that journal that you're targeting. And uh, look at online curriculum um, history of the faculty members at various institutions. Uh, what are, where are they publishing? And that sometimes gives you more tips for journals. Of course, we want you to come to our journals, but I'm just saying in case they don't fit, these are some tips. Um, and secondly, know the target journal well. Look at the current issue and back issues. Look at a few articles. Look at the style. Look at the topics. And um, note that any themes or special issues coming up email the editor-in-chief if there are questions, and make sure to follow the author guidelines carefully. I believe all of our journals have very specific guidelines. They're, they're very clear. Um, it just drags out the process if we receive submissions that aren't, you know, they're missing an abstract or bios or things like that. And third, um, there are steps to follow after submitting to a journal. You know, wait to hear from the editor with peer-reviewed feedback and next steps. Um, you can always ask the editor-in-chief for clarification as needed, but I say refrain from over-communicating. Um, we have a lot of lag sometimes in just trying to secure our reviewers from the editorial board, or they may be hospitalized or have circumstances come up and they don't let us know, and then we have to find another reviewer. It just, just drags on and on. We, we need time. We, we don't forget. We're not losing your articles, um, but we need time to deal with humans and their situations. And Sometimes it can take one to two years to get published in any journal. You know, that's normal. And some people seem to expect because it's an online type of journal that there's quick turnaround. And maybe some journals do that and have the support to make that happen, but that's not normal. And I think those are the main things I wanted to cover. If there are any questions. Thank you, Kathleen. That was great. And it's really nice to have the general overview of looking for places to publish and trying to find a good fit for an article or an idea that you're working on. You did mention something though that I might spin a different way, which is if we have folks here or others at the university who are interested in a different role, maybe being a journal reviewer, um, I'll just open that up to our editors who are here to talk about how, how would folks become a reviewer and what do they do if they are a reviewer? Um, I can't speak for the other journals, but I'll just speak for mine real, really quickly. Um, they can email me anytime. I'm happy to add to the editorial board as long as they have some kind of credentials or experience related to the content of the journal. That's the first thing I look for. The second thing is, you know, I need to see a Vita. I need to see that someone is published, um, conducted research, and, you know, just has those credentials to be able to review others' work. Thank you. I'm just going to open it up to the other editors. Jeff, go ahead. Yeah, I think uh, our best our best subject matter uh, editors are people who have published uh, in, who have been published in the journal in the Saber and Scroll. Um, I, I agree with Kathleen. Uh, you know, it's we get the best responses when people strictly you know when people have done their research and they've looked at the journal. And they've looked at the style of the, the articles. Um, they've looked at the submission guidelines, and they adhere closely to them. And my experience is that people who enjoy that process find that they're they may not enjoy it for the first couple of times they go through it, but eventually they'll they'll realize that uh, we're not making them jump through hoops just to you know for exercise. We, they really do, their writing really does improve and they go through that peer review process. And once you've been through that once, twice, then you really have an appreciation for what's required and you're in the best position to be able to be a reviewer, to coach uh, new authors through that process. And Sonny, I would, I would agree with, um, with Kathleen and Jeff that, you know, it's, it's in, we, we're always welcoming editors and people who would like to be on our editorial board and be reviewers for the journal. Um, you can just shoot an email to the journal email. Ours is cisajournal at gmail.com. Um, 
And, uh, and like Kathleen said, we would want to see, you know, a list of topics that you feel that you could, um, that you would feel comfortable reviewing as well as, um, you know, your CV. Um, I would, I just also wanted to add though, that um, I, I don't know what, if it's the same for all journals, but the public, the policy studies organization at Scholastica helped us to set up a reviewer section um, in our, our website. So when you are a reviewer, it's not a scary process. It's really pretty straightforward. You come in and the manuscript is assigned to you. And then we have an online form that you fill out. So there's a checklist of things to look for in the article. And it kind of walks you through what we are hoping that you'll look at. And then there's a section where you can give comments to us that only the editors will see, as well as comments that you would want to share with the author. So it's um, you know, don't feel like it's um, an overwhelming process. They've made it very simple and very clear, and <clears throat> there's a lot of guidance in there. So, uh, so I would encourage anyone who's, you know, um, published and who has, uh, you know, understands the publishing process, that you are familiar with papers, you feel that you'd like to try to be a reviewer, you know, reach out to the different journals, whatever your area of expertise may be. Thank you. And I see uh, Samir put a question in the chat about which journal may be most relevant to publish research papers in health sciences and public health. So I'll put that out to the to the editors of these respective journals. Um, it'll only relate to journal of online learning research and practice if it's something about teaching, um, learning, structural methods, faculty aspect online learning, something like that. If it's just the discipline specific without that online learning, teaching supportive element, it wouldn't fit the journal. And Samira, it might be, it probably depends on the spin, like Kathleen is saying, the Global Security and Strategic Implications, or Strategic Intelligence, sorry, journal, uh, would be interested, I think, in papers like that if it were looking at maybe public health issues from a security or intel standpoint. So if the framework for the article uh, dealt with some of those issues around national or global security or international relations or intel, which, I'm sure there could be uh, some in that area, then that would be a good fit. And David has a question here for Jeff. Is it acceptable to submit an article if the article is part of a larger project, such as a book? Absolutely. Um, we, we do, and we have published, uh, we, we do not publish student theses, but we've published a number of uh, articles derived from them. And it, we, have a, we have a word length. Uh, and one of the ways that we can get around that though is we can serialize articles. Uh, so yeah, if you have, a, if you have a, uh, a, an article idea that's part of a, of a, of a bigger project, Absolutely, we, we'd love, if you'd like to just send me uh, an abstract, I'd be happy to look at it and, and let you know what we're saying. These are great questions. We have other questions from the, the audience here about our specific journals or a fit. Samir's saying, I'm assuming we do have the same conflict of interest that articles will not be accepted and published in other journals. That's, yes, that's pretty standard. So that's from, from an author standpoint, yes. Once you are submitting something and it's in the editorial process or in the process of publication, then you wouldn't be submitting it somewhere else unless you get a hard reject. And once it's published by one journal, um, you're likely not going to be able to republish the same thing elsewhere. Sometimes with a book manuscript, portions of the book may have been published previously as journals and then turned into a larger monograph. I think that's a little more common in some fields like history uh, where, where that happens. 
But yeah, good point, Samir. Any other comments from our editors, things you would like folks here to know? Oh, and thank you, um, Kelsey, for posting um, the Joel wrap. Go yeah, ahead, uh, I just gave her the Joel wrap Twitter and Joel wrap Facebook links. Um, not that we post a ton, but we do post updates and calls for papers and things like that. Perfect. And I will go ahead and put the Joel Rapp main site in here too, just so it's in there with all the others. You can see there's a trend here with the URLs once you get the, the journal name down. Well, if there are not other yeah, if you questions... start with that. Um, go ahead, Kelsey. <laughs> I was just going to say, if you start with that PSO link that Jenny posted a little further back and you go into the... Um, PSO publications, you'll be able to find everybody's journal today. So that's a good, it's a good starting point. And I was going to just say to um, please just email the editors if you have any questions about anything. You know, we're very happy uh, with any interest in the journals and we will answer any questions anytime. So don't hesitate to contact us. Absolutely. So for folks here and those who might be listening to this later on, um, spread the word. You know, some of these journals, as you've heard, have been around for a while, but several of them are fairly young and are seeking to gain um, visibility and reputation and more submissions. So we welcome, I know, submissions from APUS and from beyond. So when you are out at your scholarly conferences in your discipline, uh, keep those journals in mind to be able to spread the word to others in the field where they might be a good fit. And um, like Kathleen said, reach out to the editors if you have questions or you're thinking about submitting and trying to think about fit for the journal or what, what makes the most sense. Thank you, Jeff, for putting that info in for your Gmail account. I gave Kelsey my email addresses and teams. <laughs> if she can post them. Perfect. Thank you. I see that. And if anyone else wants to put in your contact information, what we'll try to do, I think we can get the URLs and things into the recording notes when we put that together so they'll be centralized. And, and if they go to our website, the email addresses should be there. I assume for all the journals. I know they are for our journal draw that exactly yeah i was just going to add to that you know the website is really a, for each of the journals it's a great resource for information and um you know when when jeff shared his and i shared mine i don't know if you guys noticed but on that bar at the top there's a four authors section which contains you know the scope of the journal a list of all the topics um ours also includes you know, specifics on style. We do use APA format for our journal and specifics on um, just some other, you know, formatting and stylistic uh, um, issues with the articles. So there's a lot of really great information there. And if you're, you know, it'll answer a lot of questions. And, and like Kathleen said, we're always happy to answer questions and, you know, anything that that it might not be clear, please contact us. We monitor the Gmail or, you know, just email us directly either way uh, and we're happy to work with you and get back to you and help you to um, get things published yeah i think publishing well well thought out submission guidelines you know clear and concise saves a lot of work because you know uh, as been it's been mentioned the peer reviewers can basically use the submission guidelines like a checklist in order to, to make sure that all the required uh content is there before they you know, uh, go through the, the process of, of reading only to find out that it's, it's missing something important. And, you know, if, I, if I could, Jenny, one other thing that I would just um, love to get out there just in terms of something that we see in 
when we're working with the authors, um, one thing that especially, you know, for all of us as teachers and educators, something to really get across to students to help prepare them for professional writing and professional publications. Um, the one area I see that people tend to be a little light on is frequently the literature to review or background research section. Um, it's so important to make sure that, you know, when you're writing an article that you've really done a comprehensive search of the literature in the field and that you include, you know, an overview of that in your article so that people can see that you've done your research and they can clearly see where, um, you know, your, your research or your commentary or whatever you're publishing, you know, fits in and expands the field. So, um, that's mentioned on our four authors as well as the four reviewers sections on our websites. But that's one thing that we find ourselves working with the um, with individual authors, especially you know when you have students who are trying to publish their research. Students tend to um, need a little extra guidance, maybe in in that section. So um, that's just something to think about, you know, when you're mentoring students in research or when you're you know helping them to to get ready to publish some of their work. Um, one thing we've noticed, that's all. <laughs> no, that's excellent. And that's that's good advice for any journal because one of the first reviewers questions is, how does this fit into the field? And what is this article adding to the conversation? So that's that's really important and, and a good thing to point out as you're getting ready. I appreciate our editors being here today and all of you for joining. Please spread the word about these journals. As you can see, they are beautifully done and you know, really exciting publications. And we're looking to build, keep building them and promoting submissions from APUS and, and beyond from everywhere in the scholarly world. So thank you so much for being here and, and for the editors and please get involved. Hope to see you over the next couple of days at our future sessions. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Have a good afternoon.